ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونتوب اليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله ارسله الله بالهدى رحمه للعالمين فبلغ الرساله وادى الامانه ونصح للامه وجاهد في الله حق جهاده حتى اتاه اليقين اما بعد عباد الله اوصيكم ونفسي بتقوى الله عز وجل فقد فاز المتقون واذكركم ونفسي بقول الله تبارك وتعالى والذين جاهدوا فينا لنهدينهم سبلنا وان الله لمع المحسنين dear muslims all praise is due to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you remember with me when we leave last friday with examples of patience people who meant it when they say inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un when this word have it is fruit in the heart of a believer and they will come to realize that when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said inna nahnu narithu al-ard wa man 'alayha wa ilayna yurja'un indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who will inherit this universe the earth and the heaven and whatever in them and they all will go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you remember the heart of the mother <coughs> who sent the message all the way from africa hearing the death of her son her son in syria and she remember what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said ومن يخرج من بيته مهاجرا الى الله ورسوله ثم يدركه الموت فقد فقد وقع اجره على الله anyone who left their home migrating to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala migrating to the prophet alayhi salatu wa salam and then they die while they are involved with that their reward is not mentioned it is beyond being mentioned Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who will reward them. It is a lesson for all of us to remember that truly we will never know what will happen to me or to my family member or to someone who we know now or tomorrow. But a believer always will remain the mountain of patience. There are incidents we went through in our life. and you have a lot for sure in your mind think that you remember and then you will surrender to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the meaning of allahu akbar will shine in your heart because truly he is allahu akbar allah is the greatest and what he wants will take place we want to live today inshallah with what will happen to me if i do something wrong in my life in another word <coughs> the consequences of sins and when we say about this way the consequences of sins is straight away we will remember the first story of the consequences of sins we will remember our father adam alayhi salam who was in the best place with his family with his wife who was in a place that he didn't have to do anything to get his provision but what happened this reminded us from the beginning what can take away from us thing that we love thing that we want to stay with forever and what is better than paradise and we know the story of adam alayhi salam and the forbidden fruit or the the patient fruit we can say the fruit of pain what made, made, made it painful 
where disobedience is important. We are running on the air, east and west, looking for happiness. And we are told the only way to be happy is to surrender completely to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when we think about the consequences of sins, we will remember what happened to our father Adam alayhi salam and what made him out from paradise. It is when we fail in the test, do or don't. And he was told, don't. And he made a mistake and it happened. And what he lost? Not only the fruit, but the entire paradise. And he was sent out. And he was given a mission now. You had it before with no price. But now you have to get the price for it. You will work on earth. It's still yours, if you want. You obey the rules of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you will come back home. <coughs> but that story will remind us the consequences of sins in our life. And we remember the second story, the flood that destroyed the people of Nuh alayhi salam. Why that happened? Through sins, including the son of Nuh alayhi salam, who used to tell his father, thinking that he has grown up. I know the way to survive. I know where to go. I know what to do. That's what he used to say. Sa'awi ila jabalim ya'asimuni min al I will go onto a mountain that will save me from that flood, from that water. And the father said to him, La asim al yawma min amri illahi illa man kafrahi. There is no one can be protected today unless whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protected. But the son didn't listen. Just like many of us nowadays, sometimes we feel that we know more than our parents. And we are educated more than our parents. And by the time we realized it was too late. And the parents' love will never die to us. And Nuh alayhi salam didn't give up until the last moment he was kissing his son, trying to remind him, come back and be with us. But he said no. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala interfered and he made the judgment. And when the judgment comes, there is no emotion can help. It is over. The person's chances to be successful is over. He rejected the means of Hidayah. It was taken away from him. It was just simple. Listen to your father and you will be safe. Because your father will never advise you to do something that will destroy you. And they know better and more than you. But sometimes when one is the peak of our arrogance, or so-called civilization, we seem to go too far. And by the time we want to go back, we don't have enough time to make it. It is too late. So we can see the consequences of sin in our life. It destroys nations. And also we remember the story of Ad and Thamud and Firaun and Karun and Haman and the Holy Quran told us Wa Karuna wa Firauna wa Haman wa laqad jaahum Musa bin Bayyina fastakbaru fil abdi wa ma kanu sadiqin They have been warned Karun and Haman and Firaun Karun he lost through his wife, his money drained him. Haman, through his ministry, his influence and status in the society destroyed him. And Firaun, through the same thing. When he started to say, I am the best, I am the greatest, and so on, until he claimed that he is the God. And that claim destroyed them. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us why. Fakullan. Every one of them, what destroyed them, it is their sins. It is not injustice from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is because of what they have done. For many whom, man arsalna alayhi hasiba, some of them have been destroyed with the wind, with the storms. And they have been destroyed. For many whom, man akhadat husayha. And some of them with a sound that they cannot tolerate. It destroyed them and cut them into pieces. Women whom 
man khasafna bihil ard like karu the air that on which he used to be arrogant that had the swallow of him and everything that belongs to him back home many people are saying now if you're dealing with the gold be very careful because that gold belongs to karu it is a wealth of the ada and many people are digging for the gold and they go underground and they will never come out and play. Some people, they make it. They go out on the surface and play, and then they go back down into that hole again, looking for gold. And sometimes, what will happen? The floor will crack and fall on like many people, and they become a massive graveyard. This is very common now back home. Due to no more rain, people now digging and looking for the gold, looking for reason under the ground. But they forget that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, what is sama in this bukum wa ma tu You risk a lot in that is in the heaven. It is written by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you have to keep your heart and your soul up to the heaven. The lower you go, you may forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The lowest you're supposed to go is in your sujood. When you put the highest place of you as a human being on the earth, saying at that moment, Subhanahu wa ta'ala. But sometimes the people forget and they think that my hard work will bring it to me. My intelligence will bring it to me. But it is somewhere that we cannot bring it down until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does so. What is sama is So they used to say, the gold is killing the people because it is Karun's well. And if you follow it, what happened to Karu will ha happen to you. And truly it is true, when that will make us forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we start to say to our salat, oh my salat, I have no time for you. I have something else more important to me to do. And they ignore the salat. And the, they cut the relation between them and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What is the point if I know everything, but I don't know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? If I go to everyone, but I don't go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When Khalid ibn walid was told, looking at the number of the enemies are more more than the Muslims. And some people say to him, they are more than us. But Khalid ibn walid radiallahu anhu said, no, wrong, they are not more than us. Because Allah is with us. And when Allah is with you, there is no number can beat you. They are still say, we think if things go wrong, we run to that mountain. And he said, no. If we have to run, we will run to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fafiru in Allah. So the way he was thinking was completely different. Even in the Jahiliya, he knew fully how to deal with his life. He learned from life how to live. And we're supposed to do so. And the Wahi will come and shine this knowledge for us. So what this way the human being? is the sin that we commit in our day-to-day day -day life. And the Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam always reminded the Sahaba before they go to any war to defend themselves. The enemies out there are nothing. The real enemy that can destroy you and defeat you before you meet them is your sins. So you have to purify yourself when you want to be a true soldier of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So sins have consequences in our life. And many people have been burned with the flames of the sins. And Imam Malik, rahmatullahi alayhi, when Imam Shafi'i, rahmatullahi alayhi, sat in front of him, and he read the muwatta to Imam Malik, Imam Malik was amazed, and he said to him, Ya Bunaya, inni ara anna allaha, قَدْ أَلْقَى عَلَيْكَ عَلَىٰ قَلْبِكَ نُورًا فَلَا تُطْفِئُهُ بِظُلْمَةِ الْمَعْصِيَةِ Oh my son, I can observe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has thrown nur on your heart. <laughs> Don't put it out. Do not extinguish that nur with the darkness of sins. Sins will bring darkness into your life. <laughs> and Imam Shafi said later, when he noticed that, he is not happy with the way he is memorizing things. He feels that is not good enough. And he said it. And we all know this too, right? When he said, Shakautu ida wakiyai, 
So I keep it. I complain to my teacher Waki that I'm not happy with the way I'm memorizing my knowledge. But my teacher guided me and all he told me, you have to keep away from sins. And he reminded me that knowledge is known from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he won't give it to a sinful heart. So if you really want to be a successful student, the education that will not take out your aqidah or the relation between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, don't take that out. If you take that out, we will never produce educated people. And all we are producing are people who will work hard for something that will end. This is the dunya. They will have very high degrees in work and they may know everything. But they may not know even the basic things about the purpose of life. This is to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there is no benefit on, on, on that knowledge. Knowing that we have been told as Muslims to share with mankind every type of useful knowledge to human society. And that used to happen. And we knew when the Europeans used to go to the University of Cordoba and learn Arabic in order to study science and mathematics and so on and medicine. To the extreme that Imam Shafi used to say in his time and he was blaming the Muslim society. How come we gave away the third of our knowledge to non-believers? And when they asked him, what is the third of knowledge? And he said, I'm not take the medicine. We used to provide this to the rest of the world. But now it is the other way around. It has been given to them and we become only consumers. The Imam was not happy with that. The Muslims have to keep that knowledge and build on that and keep it going. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us, even when you declare your shahada, your creed, and the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, do not say it out of imitation. You should know what you are saying. When you say the shahada, say it with knowledge. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He doesn't want idols. He doesn't want people who will believe in voice and pictures. As the Arab said a long time ago, La tuqallit al-babbaga wa la tawus. Illa al-babbaga laysa illa sawtan wa tawus laysa illa lawlan. Do not imitate the parrot or the peacock because a parrot is nothing but only sound. And if that sound is useful, you can teach a parrot, maybe even how to memorize the Quran. But will they get reward out of that? A bird reciting the Quran because I don't know what to expect, but they heard and imitate that. So we don't rely on sound and colors or voice. One man in Darwin who was collecting money, knocking door to door, there was a mosque to be built in one of the villages in Indonesia, and this man was knocking the Muslim family's door to donate for that mosque. And then this man, he came to the mosque and said, unbelievable what he said to me. So somebody gave him an envelope, and when he opened, there was $5,000 in it. And that man could not believe. There exist a group of people in our society. And I said, yes. And these people may go to Allah in a very secret way, and me and you go to Allah only with voice. We only talk about the beauty of Islam and everything. But some people, they are silent, and dealing with Allah in a way that they have secret between them and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because the voice of the Quran hits their heart. That why they built a masjid, not your home or anybody, it is the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These are the people who know what is the meaning of wealth and they know what is the way to keep my wealth for me. The only way to do so is to give it in the saving account that we have by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Man kalladhi yukridu allaha qardan hasanan fa yudawaifahu lahu al-aqal kathira But we only have to use our insight, the eyes of our soul, the eyes of our heart to see that saving account. But only when we use the two eyes on our head, all we can see, my money becoming less because I gave that much away. That is the eyes of the green. But the real business people, they deal with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So there are consequences of sins in our life 
and William and each other, the only thing that we really have to be afraid of, number one, is what? Are the sins. What is worse to me than when I dare, for example, to ignore a law once, or twice, or three times, or five times a day, while I will be very serious in the way I dress and the time to meet somebody who may not even be there in our appointments, but I dare to miss the appointment that is held between me and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at Soho time, at Zoho time, at Asr, Maghrib, Isha. And once I get used to that, what will happen? The first punishment of a sin to me in my life is that it will give me the guts to repeat it again. Did something wrong, and then I say, I did it, and nothing happened, so I will dare to do it again. To the extreme that, sin will become my habit. And they start to publicize it. And they dare to disobey Allah openly, and they think that nothing will happen. How kind Allah is to us, and how ignorant we are. And that is due to that ignorance. We use our power to kill innocent people. Can you imagine when somebody go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and thousands of people's blood on their neck, in the name of what? Sometimes in the name of politics, in the name of power, in the name of discussion, and so on. They knock down the building of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The way the Hadith Prophecy say, al insanu bunyanu rab mala'onun man yahdimu. The human being is the structure and the building of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And only one who looks down is cursed. But some people, due to the ignorance of the meaning of life, they do that. And the Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam says, La fi Someone will remain in their comfort and at ease in their deed. You are a Muslim, maybe you have done so many bad things, but you haven't killed a human being deliberately, it's still fine. It is not too late. But while somebody's blood on your neck, it is very, very scary. Among the human rights on the judgment day, the first thing to be judged among the human rights is the blood at the mountain. And the person who has been killed will come. If their head has been cut off, they will come killing their head. And the blood is coming out, holding the killer and tell him to Allah, ask him why did he kill you. But nowadays, as we can see, death became a game. And people don't know why they are killing or why they are dying. But they are still human on this earth. Maybe last time, if you followed the program in uh, SBS, when they are showing some of the Israeli soldiers who refused to fight the Palestinians. And due to that, these Israeli soldiers have been to jail. Because these people say, I will not fight innocent people. This is not the service that we serve human society. We don't get, go and kill innocent people. And one man in Darwin, he was accused that you just came here and begged in the country and you are getting money from something doing nothing. And the man who was telling him that was a soldier. And that man said to him, yes, it's true. I'm looking for a job still. And I don't have a job yet, even in Islam. If I take money from something it is haram, Islam told us, but I don't have one yet. I will, I will wait for the right job, but I don't do the job that you are doing. What is your job? You are killing people in my country to hell. And that man was from Iraq. You are killing people, and that is your job, killing people to earn money. If it is because of the truth, they have done nothing wrong to you. You went all the way to them and killing them. And you want to tell us about human rights. We know in our life, as a human being, regardless who you are, when we do injustice, Allah SWT will interfere. When we do injustice in our family life, in our social life, in our global life, the way Ibn Al-Qayyim said, Inna Allah la yansur ad-dawlata la kafirata la adila ala dawlati al-muslimati al-zalima. Allah SWT will stand by and support a non-believing nation who are just unfair and good to humans against Muslims who do zulu and injustice to their own people. Why did I come to Mbaila Nas 
and Taku Mobila Adri. When it comes to justice, we don't ask people what is your belief. We just need to know, are you right or wrong? No one died. Why Ali bin Abi Talib, radiallahu anhu, was in the court of Shuraj al Qadi when, when a, a Jew took his arm. And Ali bin Abi Talib knew that I didn't send it to you, I didn't give it to you, it is mine. But the Jews say, no, it is not true. <coughs> and Ali was a Khalifa, radiallahu anhu, and they had to go to the judge, and that was Shuraj al Qadi. And Ali bin Abi Talib, has to get the witnesses. Who witness that? That is yours. Otherwise, it is not yours. It belongs to him. And Ali bin Abi Talib said, I have no witness. So Shurat al-Qadi, he made a judgment for the Jew, not Ali bin Abi Talib. And they left. And the Jew said, this is mine, but Ali is not a liar. So we can feel what he said. But when the Muslim judge made the judgment for him against the Muslim, and he said, that is it. These are the people of the two religion. And that made that Jew go back to himself. These are the people who we have been told to follow. The people who we have been reading about in our books, these are the one. And he became a Muslim. So we have to stand with what is right. And remember, whenever we have conflict, we go back to ourselves, and find out, am I wrong or right? Because once we are wrong, and we use our knowledge or power to get somebody else's right, remember, sins have consequences. They may come back today or tomorrow, or at the moment of death, they will come back. So we have to remember that nothing can destroy us more than the sins that will come in. It is time for all of us to remember, we have been sick and tired of being patient, I'm talking about peace every day. It is time to realize, even with the truth, remember we need power to protect it. And Islam told us to do that. And the inspiration of power to a Muslim nation starts from the unity. We need to realize now, really, we need to be united. As a community in one Muslim, as people in one city, and then it will go further in Australia and so on. Everybody knows it. And what they are afraid of, we don't want to see a time when the Muslims will let the meaning of Salat come into their life. When they are together and they all say, Allah Akbar. Not my tribe, not my blood, not anything else, it is Allah. And that way we will bring them together. That is the beginning, which we get every Friday and every day. And in our heart, and when we read the Quran, we talk to us as a nation. So we are to be afraid of our sins as young people or elderly people, that's our first enemy. And there is no sin worse than when I go against what Allah told me not to do it, or I ignore what He told me to do. Barakallahu li wa lakum fil Qur'an al-Hakim wa ja'alana wa iyaakum min al-ladhina istamiwona al-qawratan tabi'una asana aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullahu li wa lakum astaghfiruhu innahu huwa al-afur al-rahim Alhamdulillahi thumma alhamdulillah Alhamdulillahi al-ladhi hadana li hadha wa ma kunna li nahtadiya lawla an hadana Allah Man yahdi illahu falamu dhinna lak wa man yudhin falahadiya lak Ashadu an la ilaha ila Allah wa ahdahu la sharika lak Wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluh Ayyad Allah qala ta'ala Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusadduna ala al-nabi Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima Allahumma salli ala muhammad wa ala ala muhammad كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد. Dear Muslims, we are talking about running away from sins. We need patience for God and we need patience for the musibah that we face every day. Some people die, some people are sick, and right now our brother Huram. His mother is sick in New Zealand and will go to Operation Open Heart uh, in the following days to come. And we know the real medicine for a believer is the dua. The way the Prophet Ibrahim salam, said, What is the Maritu for who is He is the one who can heal us. And with the dua from our heart for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive those who pass away, 
and to heal and send remedy to those who are sick and keep them firm on the test of a sickness uh, after uh, health. اللهم اغفر للمسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات الاحياء منهم والاموات برحمتك يا ارحم الراحمين اللهم اشف مرضانا وارحم موتانا واقض الدين عنا وعن المدينين اللهم احسن ختامنا واخرجنا من الدنيا مسلمين لا اله الا انت سبحانك انا كنا من الظالمين اللهم استر عوراتنا واغفر زلاتنا ولا تخطفنا بذنوبنا في الدنيا ولا في الاخره برحمتك يا ارحم الراحمين عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعدكم لعلكم تذكرون وأقيموا الصلاة.